We are less than a minute from kickoff in Louisville, Kentucky on a sunny but chilly championship Saturday. So much at stake across the college football landscape today. And here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, one of the most important games ever played here is the Louisville Cardinals play host to the Yukon Huskies. Our coverage presented by Cars.com. Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman joined in a moment by Aaron Andrews. Louisville begins this championship Saturday tied with Rutgers for the lead in the Big East Conference. A Cardinal win today assures them of at least a share of the Big East Conference championship, but they're looking for much more than that today. Louisville needs to win today and needs a Rutgers loss tonight at West Virginia to give the Cards the automatic bid into a BCS Bowl game since Rutgers owns the tiebreaker by virtue of its win earlier this year over Louisville. And Chris, it's a likely scenario what Louisville needs today. They're a big favorite here, and Rutgers, the underdog tonight in Morgantown. Well, the biggest thing they have to watch out for, Sean, is distractions. It's senior day. Everybody's excited, and it would make UConn season to knock off the Cardinals. Louisville won the toss and elected to receive, and Craig McDomino's kickoff for Connecticut goes out of bounds. Kickoff out of bounds, untouched by the receiving team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. And they don't need any help with field position. Believe me, this is a powerful offense. Connecticut shaky in many facets of the kicking game and off to a shaky start. Nothing shaky about Louisville's impact players. Brian Brom outstanding the last two weeks against South Florida and Pittsburgh. Has not been sacked in either one of those games. That's been a key. And Malik Jackson, their big playmaker on defense. 14 tackles for a loss. And a team high eight sacks for Louisville defense that leads the nation in sacks. Brian Brom, the junior, from right here in Louisville, wanted to come out throwing. Now takes it down and runs, and runs well. Into Connecticut territory and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Run out by Ryan Hennigan. It's a gain of 20 for Brom, not known for his speed, but demonstrated plenty there. And he knows his vision right there. Nothing downfield to be able to tuck the ball and run. And here's where he's got smarters heading for the sidelines. But Hennigan takes a shot when he can get a shot. Longest run of the season for Brom. 6'4", 225 pounds. And a handoff to Colby Smith. And he gets five to the 40. Let's give you the rest of the Louisville offense. Brought to you by Nivea for men. They're second in the nation in total offense behind only Hawaii. And the big playmakers are on the outside. Mario Uridia and Harry Douglas, each with a chance to have a 1,000-yard season. Possible they could both get there today. That would be a first in Louisville history should it happen. They've never had two 1,000-yard receivers in the same year. Brom looks to run again. And he's near a first down at the 35-yard line. Five more for Brom. For Connecticut defensively, last couple of years, one of the best in the nation. Not so this year against the tougher schedule. And the challenge will be in the secondary where they are experienced against this terrific Louisville passing game. The onus particularly on Darius Butler and Tyvon Branch to hold up. And Butler might have an interesting day. He is the backup quarterback. Depleted at that position are the Huskies due to injury. Butler could see action if their starter, Matt Monoslowski, goes down. On third down and short, the handoff to Anthony Allen, a part of their running back by committee. He's a short yardage specialist, but he didn't get there. Yeah, he's got 10 touchdowns on a year. He knows how to pound it in. He was able just to sneak by the first down in Connecticut, where they suffer on defense, Sean. 104th in the country in stopping the run. I look for Louisville to exploit the run, keep the game safe, then go ahead and hit the play action like they did the first two pass attempts where they try to get one over the top. They did give them the forward progress to the 34 and a first down. What's up? Louisville on the move, two minutes into the ball game. Colby Smith, the tailback. Now he's their leading rusher, but you'll see a lot of different backs. They had eight different ball carriers last week in their win at Pitt. Darius Butler up from his secondary spot to chop down Smith at the 26-yard line. Colby Smith, one of 15 seniors playing in their final home game here today, and as usual, the emotional on-the-field ceremony for the seniors. Cousin of Mike Brown of the Bears. 
from Tallahassee, Florida. And he said the win that Louisville had in 2002 on national TV over Florida State really opened his eyes to this Louisville program. He said he enjoyed it. He was not an FSU fan growing up in Tallahassee, surrounded by Seminole fans. George Stripling took over for Smith and got the first down to the 19-yard line. Well, again, Louisville's coming out and taking the physical punch right to UConn's defense, knowing that their weakness is stopping the run, and I'm looking at UConn, and the one thing I would do if I were making an adjustment right now, they have a seven-man front. They're playing two safeties deep. When you do that, you do not have an on-block player, and Louisville's offense is doing a great job of sustaining blocks throughout the whole play. They're not coming off of guys. Struggles against the run. They have been good against the pass. Connecticut with a veteran secondary. Their four starters, a combined 85 career start. They stick with the run with Stripling. He got a wallop. But a quality gain down near the 13-yard line where Lindsey Witten, a true freshman defensive end, belted him. Bobby Petrino, with all running plays. They have called a couple of passes, but Brom took it down and ran with it on two occasions. So seven rushes and no passes. Usually they're very balanced. Yeah, you look at it and he has his brother, Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator up in the booth with him. They give him about three plays and Bobby makes the final decision, but there's no need to throw it unless you have to throw it. Brock Bolden, who doubles as a fullback, was the lone back. Nice juggling catch made at the seven yard line by the tight end, Gary Barnage. He's their third leading receiver. That's his 25th catch of the year, the junior from Middleburg, Florida. It's a nice little option route. I like the throw and a great one-handed catch by Barnage, but the throw was delivered before Barnage came out of his cut. And you can see an experienced veteran football team and a team that's comfortable with its quarterback, knowing that the ball's going to be there as soon as they make the turn out of the cut. Brock Bolin remains the lone back. Trying to get outside to the left, got back to the line and perhaps just a bit more before Tyvon Branch took him down inbounds. It'll be second down and goal. Louisville 10 and 1. The one loss at Rutgers. And they blew a second half lead in New Jersey. That's the only thing standing between them, Chris, and right now being number two in those BCS rankings and thinking about with a win today playing for a national championship. Man, you know, they are so balanced and talented, and the one thing this Louisville team has maybe over the, the middle of the road Big East teams is tremendous depth. You can see that at their running back position. Good fake by Brahmi as a man wide open. It's Harry Douglas who didn't get into the end zone, and the ball came out. The Huskies say we have it. The officials appear to be marking Douglas down just shy of the goal line. Looked like M.J. Estep, a senior playing in his last game in that Connecticut secondary, might have popped the ball out. Take a look. You be the judge. Harry Douglas, known to be a great run-after catch guy right here. He's got to secure the football. He tries to sneak it out. That's a fumble. That ball's out. 11th play of the drive, and it's a touchdown for Anthony Allen. Allen, a true freshman. And that's his role in this running back by committee situation. He's now had a rushing touchdown in seven of the last eight games. And a total of 11 for the year. That's their 32nd rushing touchdown of the season. They're fifth in the country in that category. Art Carmody, one of the best kickers in the country, adds the extra point. An impressive opening drive. Louisville, with title aspirations, leads 7 0. The team captain. Right there's a movie. And a very highly regarded NFL prospect. Third down for UConn, and Brown won't get to the first down marker. Stuffed shy of the 15-yard line. He needed the 16. Lacoya in on the stop with Zach Anderson. And Connecticut will punt. There were high school playoff games in this stadium the last couple of days, and we visited bodies. They don't even have the full complement on their travel roster. Brought only 58 players here today, only one healthy quarterback. Third down and goal. Bonasloski under duress. 
Now has time and flips to the end zone and it is incomplete. Intended for Brandon Young and broken up by William Gay, one of the best cornerbacks in the Big East. And William Gay did a nice job of not in. And try to earn the BCS Bowl berth out of the Big East and secure at least a tie for the conference championship. With Rutgers wins tonight, they're in a BCS Bowl game and they take on West Virginia. Third down and three, Louisville. A deep ball and it is caught! And a flag now. Harry Douglas, the adjustment to the ball. Darius Butler had the coverage. Flag down, the catch made at the 37-yard line. So that's trust. And you see Harry Douglas, the leading receiver on his football team, is just going on a takeoff. Butler does have good position. Pass interference, number 25 on the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. But double agitated on the sideline. Doesn't take much to get him. A little on the cranky side. Bronislawski throws and has the tight end. Dan Murray and now the ball's out and Louisville takes it back. Gavin Smart recover the fumble. Malik Jackson popped it out. Randy Edson saying, Dan Murray, how can this be? We just got a break and you'll give it right back to them. Watch Malik with the wraparound. Nice punch it out of there, Malik. Got it, baby. Ball security. Don't see it. This is pull off a huge upset today. They're about a four touchdown underdog. Yeah, it is. And it would make their season. I mean, we don't have much of the season, but it would make their season if they could knock Louisville off. Trying to do it in Louisville, where the Cardinals have won 17 straight home games, second longest home winning streak active in the nation. And a man wide open. Harry Douglas, touchdown Louisville. 67 yards. Defense. Simple rule. Deepest to deepest. Lack of execution. UConn equals points for the Cardinals. Second week in a row. Douglas is having a big yardage game. Carmody has the extra point. Last week at Pittsburgh, he had four catches for 132 yards, including a 75-yard touchdown. That was an average of 33 per play last week. So far today, four catches, 124 yards in a TD. And he did not make the 20-yard line chopped down by Alan Barnes. Why do we have the duck back? We missed the duck last week. Must be rabbit season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let that go quickly. <laughs> Louisville has had a first-team all-conference quarterback the last seven seasons. It was the last non-Louisville first-team quarterback. Brom comes out throwing, and it is juggled and still caught with flags down. Gary Barnage, the tight end, the 33-yard catch, despite the interference from MJE Step. It's the same thing, no matter if it's Douglas or Barnage, if you do not hinder the inside receivers released down the middle of the Pass field. Interference, number 35 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. You have no shot. We just stretch the field. He's running straight down the field, untouched. And you can see where the interference comes with the right arm and the hook. So we have to go for this trivia question back eight years in Conference USA. They were in Conference USA back then. Flag down as Colby Smith turns the corner and gets run out by MJ Eastup. But there is a flag in the middle of the field. Thrown in the secondary. Coming late, usually behind the play, and one thing is an offensive lineman, which you do not want to do, or anybody on offensive for that matter. Holding, number 85 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Is block or hold behind the play? Well, do you want to guess? 
Go back eight years, Conference USA. Louisville back then was in Conference USA. I don't know. Last time they did not have their conference's oh. first team all conference QB, Sean King, and those terrific two lane teams of the late 1990s under uh, Tommy Bowden. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez, I believe, Rich was the office coordinator. He was. Well, here's Brom. Lost from the pocket. Well, oh, he's feeling it with the legs today. Dives forward. Very near the first down inside the 39 where he met Darius Butler. 11 yard gain for Brom. Again, it's recognition. Everybody's dropping off in zone and they're so deep. And you see Brian Brom is a pretty good athlete and, and actually delivers the blow on Butler. I doubt the Connecticut coaches spent much time this week saying, hey, you have to be really <laughs> yeah. careful about Brom taking it down and running out of the pocket. Yeah, 35 yards. That might be a career. Second down and one, George Stripling. Here's enough, it appears, for the first down. He lunged across that yellow line. Danny Lansana made the tackle. First down, Louisville. Trying to answer a very impressive drive by Connecticut. They went 79 yards in just six plays. Brown carried for 78 of the 79 yards on the Connecticut drive that got them within a touchdown. We're more than midway through the second quarter now. And there are a lot of Connecticut fans today in West Virginia. It's still possible that West Virginia could be a BCS bowl team, but they need Connecticut to win this game. Create the possibility of a three-way tie for the conference title, in which case the highest ranked team in the BCS rankings would go. And should Louisville lose here today and West Virginia beat Rutgers, it's likely West Virginia would be the highest of the three in the BCS ranking. Yeah, I've just been so impressed with all of the Big East this year. It's been great football. I think it uh, proved a lot of people wrong. Brom throws. And the catch made by Yerudia. Forward progress with the first down to the 25-yard okay. line. Aaron? Well, Sean, Brian, Brom, obviously Louisville is in this kid's blood. His father, Oscar, played here in the late 60s. His brothers, Greg and Jeff, both playing receiver quarterback here. Jeff, his quarterback's coach in his ear quite often, and his brother, Greg, the director of ops here at Papa John Cardinal Stadium. And you know that if they do get a chance to get this BCS bid, be huge for Brian because all he's ever heard about is Louisville. And by the way, Jeff has a two-year-old son, Brady, and I've already been told he will play quarterback as well. <laughs> well. He already has a scholarship offer. Throw to the end zone by Brian Brown. Touchdown, Harry Douglas. Just, just do what Uncle Brian does, young man. He'll be a good quarterback. Patience. Allowing your playmaker to get open. Then there's the touch pass. He can zip it, he can touch it, he can do what he wants with it. Touchdown. 25 yarder. Go with the 67 yarder moments ago for Douglas. Five catches, 149 yards receiving, and two scores for Douglas. And Carmody adds the extra point. Brian Brown takes the Cardinals 82 yards on just seven plays and needed only two minutes and 51 seconds to do it. They lead by two touchdowns. The board. And they are going to go for it. I like it. the call he juggled the hand off and did not appear to get the first down he did not Earl Heyman the sophomore from Louisville Kentucky dropped the play for a loss and I bet coach Edsel and his staff would like to have that second and one over again yeah Earl Heyman made the play in the first one now he hits Donald Brown head up and doesn't give an inch and stones his momentum. That's two plays in a row in short yardage for Earl Hay. Which way it goes. We can see and plenty of leg. That's off yeah. the top of the upright from 42 yards. Yeah. Went outside the white stakes, so. No good. 
Well, the frustration continues for Connecticut. Louisville's first possession of the second half. They come out throwing. Brom to Gary Barnage, the tight end. And he has a first down and a pickup of 12 out to the 37 yard line. MJ Step made the tackle. That tight branch was right there. Could have made the hit on Barnage. But again, I'm seeing some of the UConn DBs, and I would show this as a training film. They're starting to duck their head on contact because of the size. I don't know why, but see what you hit, hit what you see. Branch missed him completely. Bobby Petrino calling the plays with the help from his brother. Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator. They dial up a run for Colby Smith. Paul Petrino, one of the five finalists for the Frank Royals Award, which goes to the top assistant in college football. Great honor when we spoke with Paul Petrino yesterday. He's up in the coaches box. So, you know, there are about a thousand assistant coaches at this level of college football, so to be one of five truly is an honor. So it'd be nice to win the award, but as long as we're winning, I'm happy. Does a good job with the, the offense as a whole. Brom throws, caught by Yerudia in the Connecticut Territory. Again, plenty of run after the catch. Paul Petrino liked it. He should with the 25-yard game. You know, it's, it's a nice job and a nice design by Louisville. What they're doing is going to clear everybody out down the middle, recognize man coverage, and it's tough for Butler to stay with Yerudia. Yerudia recognizes man, just keeps bringing the crossing route. There's no way Butler can stay with, and they clear out the other receivers, and he's off and running to the races. Smith in trouble and dropped for a loss by Dante Moore. I wonder what Paul Petrino said yesterday. We asked him about the new timing rules that really take opportunities away from the offense. He said, I couldn't hate anything more than I hate the new timing rules. <laughs> well, you know what side of the ball he coaches on. Now you go over to Coach Cassidy on the defensive side. They love the new timing rules, but certainly I think there's going to be some adjustments made at the end of the year. Looking deep, and now he is sacked by Lindsey Witten. First sack for Connecticut today. Three and a half sacks for the year for Witten, a true freshman out of Glenville High School, Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, Ted Ginn came out of Glenville High School, his dad, the coach. And Witten played there as well. They would have preferred he not have to play this year, but because of the injuries, he's played and he's played well. Well, they did a little X game right there. He just found and picked his way, and also. Troy Smith, Sean, was the quarterback at Glenville yeah. High School. So Coach How's he? he any good? Rumor has it, he's pretty decent. I might see him on a few of these award shows that are coming up. Play clock about to run out. Brahm, a low snap, manages to scoop it up. And now he takes off running. And he lunges very near the first down. Looks like he did not quite get there. About a half yard short. Well, that's 14 more on the run for Braun. That's a veteran right there, and Brian Braun. Poor snap. He still gets his eyes downfield. Realizes the pocket is collapsing. And he said, Chris, I'm running well today. Let me tuck it and go. And he did, almost getting the first down. And I like Coach Petrino's move right here. Go ahead and try to drive the stake. Fourth and one. You can put somebody on somebody. 46 yards rushing for Braun. That's a career high. Anthony Allen, the tailback, as the first down spins back by that yellow line and then gets ahead of it again. Danny Land Santa made the tackle. First and 10, Louisville. Here in the third quarter. Bobby Petrino. As usual, his name has come up with all these coaching vacancies, including some prominent jobs currently open at Alabama, among others. He said, I am not a candidate for any job. And of course, when you have a 10-year contract worth a total of about 25 million, what gets comfortable where you are. In addition to the fact he has a terrific team coming back again next year and just about everything you need to be successful here at Louisville. Your Rudy of the intended receiver. There is Butler had the coverage, flags down in the secondary. One of the things you're going to see is the Big East coaches 
They get a great reputation. They already lost a good one in Mark D'Antonio, who Holding ended up at Michigan State. Number 28 on the defense. 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Here's Chris Fowler. Thanks, Sean. Defensive struggle over in the ACC as Georgia Tech's Reggie Ball will throw a pick here. Great story in the ACC. Anybody would have expected to see those two teams in the championship game. First down. Anthony Allen stopped right at the line of scrimmage, the 14. Ray Blagman right there, defensive tackle. Anytime you can get penetration and you slow a big running back's feet down, it takes a little bit longer for them to get going again right there. Anthony Allen literally stopped before he got going again and the pursuit was able to close the deal. Look at look at the big fella right there. Somebody sewed something in the middle of that jersey. The big man. Third quarter has been the big quarter this year for Louisville. 105 to 22 in the third quarter. Brom out of the shotgun. Colby Smith, the running back in the ball game. The Brahms left. James won almost intercepted. Should have been at the two yard line. That's the first poor decision right there by Brian Brom as Brian Hennigan came in and had a shot to make a play, but Brian was staring down the receiver. Look at his eyes now. He's not looking around. He's got his eyes on one particular target, one particular throw. Three of them around the playmaker in Douglas. Brian's just staring him down. It's not going to happen, Brian. Give a look away. Tenth play of the drive. Four wide receivers, three to the left of Brom. Colby Smith the back again. Brom, short dump off. And very close to the first down goes Jimmy Riley. Senior from Youngstown, Ohio, just his eighth catch of the year. Three of those last week in their win at Pittsburgh. It looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down and less than a yard again. And again, Coach Petrino and his staff have tremendous confidence in this offense and the running ability of short yardage for Anthony Allen. It's a play action pass and it's a touchdown. Brock Bolin. Don't be fooled. Again, when you have the ability to pound the football and you're successful, this is what's going to happen. But I'm going to tell you, you see that big guard pulling out right there? He's not going to pull if they're going to run the ball that way. As a defender, you have to see a pulling guard running away from the run action. You got to tell yourself something's up. Carmody's extra point up and good. Full with a win. Short at least a share of the Big East Conference title. George tripling the ball carrier. The Cardinals look to add to their 34 to 10 lead here in the latter stages of the third quarter. Lindsey Witten made the tackle. Of course, Louisville would go to the BCS Bowl out of the Big East Conference should they win this game and Rutgers lose tonight at West Virginia, where they've never won. Rutgers is 0 14 all time in Morgantown. Yeah. It would be a certain challenge to go in there, and you think the fans of West Virginia will be ready for that one? Yes. Yes, they will. They won't be playing for the BCS bid unless this turns around. West Virginia won't have a shot at it, but they're certainly angling for bowl position, a high ranking at the end of the year. George Tripling tackled by Dan. They don't have this many friends. Yes. Believe it or not, I do. I buy a lot of them. <laughs> Brom. I think he believes he's morphed into Stephon <laughs> LaFours here as he goes out to the 47 yard line. Dante Moore credited with the stop. Uh, but again, anytime that you can be effective, you don't have to be the Michael Vick or the Stefan LaFleur's uh, of college football. But if you can be effective, that, that's going to create opportunities and problems for defenses that scout this team and scout Brian Brom in the future. His ability to move around just enough to make positive yards. He's got close to what, 40, 45 yards? We're talking about everything that's at stake on this championship Saturday, and in particular in this game for Louisville. 
Dribbling the ball, Terry bounces off a couple of hits. Goes to the 41 of Connecticut, a first down. Lindsey Witten, the tackle. Bobby Petrino, it's been reported, might have as much as $400,000 at stake today. He has bonuses in his contract if they get into a BCS bowl game, if they win a Big East championship, if they have a top five ranking. I guess when you give them a 10 year deal worth about 25 million, the average of about two and a half million, if my Syracuse math doesn't fail me, Chris. Shouldn't you expect some of those things? I mean, that kind of money, you better be winning some yeah. conference championships and going to some yeah. and BCS he, bowl games. He does it, and he's been answering it. Off the hands of your Rudy and intercepted. Delaware coaches on their staff. Didn't look like it earlier in the year. That pass is intercepted right back by John Russell. Talk about Bonislawski being smart right there. He's got to be smart. Just go ahead and, and get another third down situation as opposed to giving the ball away on second down. Right there, he's trying to get it over the top to, Bra to Brad Kanyu. But John Russell doesn't give up on the play. He's playing two defenders, two offensive guys, Steve Browse and Kanyu. Interception of the year for John Russell, sophomore from Alexander City, Alabama. Rom comes out with a swing pass off the hands of George Stripling and incomplete. Here's Chris Fowler. Shot thanks at the Taco Bell City. Going back to the single wing. Pretty soon everybody will have a, a nickname like Horseshoe and Ghost and all that kind of good stuff. Here's Stripling on the loose and down to the 31 yard line, tackled by Danny Lansana. 20 yard gain for Stripling. Mentioned the running back by committee. Eight ball carries in the game last week against Pittsburgh. And Paul Petrino told us that Stripling is the fastest of the group. Sophomore from Jacksonville. They're playing that ACC championship game right in his hometown. Whichever team wins that ACC championship game, it'll be their first trip ever to a BCS Bowl. Amazing the number of players on the Louisville roster from Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. About 80% of their defense is from those three states. Recruit speed, they recruit great athletes. Here's another. Colby Smith. Virginia ESPN presented by Cars.com. Fourth quarter. Louisville with the ball at a 34 to 10 lead. Second down, four at the Connecticut 25. Here's Anthony Allen. Inside the five yard line. A senior from Tampa, tackled by Dante Mora Jr. from Tampa. First and goal, Louisville, a gain of 20. You can see the big tackle, Kirk Quarterman, right there, pull and kick out and clearing house for Big Anthony, who wants to get six more on his senior day in Papa John Stadium. What's about the gist of it today? up to 493 yards of total offense with almost a full quarter to go. That's above their season average. Allen spins down to the three, tackled by Ryan Hennigan. Louisville's averaging over 468 yards per game. Second in the uh, NCAA behind Hawaii, which just marches up and down the field every time they have the ball. Yeah, but just a... a very versatile offense, a lot of different looks, three wides, two backs, three tights, like you see right here. It's a lot of different formations. They executed perfectly. Anthony Allen, touchdown. We talked about how Hawaii goes up and down the field. We spoke with Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator yesterday. He said, we expect to score as an offense every time we're on the field. The there are a lot of games it seems like they do that. And that's the kind of talent that they have. And you'll see right here why. Because low men win. And they're able to change the line of scrimmage. And Anthony Allen is not going to be denied on his last game as a Cardinal in the home stadium. Good for you, Anthony. Good for you. Adds the extra 
point, 51 yard drive, just six plays in two and a half minutes. And Allen captain, 41 to. Guys, and every time I watch it, the wrong team wins. <laughs> Says he doesn't have much luck when he watches the game. The team he wants to win generally loses. So he said, I'll probably have people at my house. They'll be watching it. They'll tell me what's going on, but I'm not going to watch it. Brown hit immediately by Nate Harris. Senior from Miami in his last game in this stadium. Team leading tackler entering today's action tied with William Gay for that honor. He had 11 tackles at Pittsburgh in their big win last week. That's a good read by Nate Harrison shoots the gap and talking to some NFL executive. He actually has draftable numbers 6 1 235 Sean he's a 4 5 guy 40 and anytime you get a linebacker to run 4 5 teams will definitely take a look at you. I'm glad I'm not paying your phone bill. You're talking to these talent people and NFL people and college coaches. I'm over here. Koye doesn't want to watch tonight, but everybody's had their eyes on him all day today. He's been at the center of it time and time again. Donald Brown dropped for another loss back to the 29 yard line. You know, and what right here is the good feet and the ability to burst to get a running back down on the ground especially one like Donald Brown he doesn't get frozen he's able to get his bent knee position and burst and not get stuck with his knees bent very good athlete for his size and again his weight loss has helped him tremendously this year six yards and losses can I get gone under 200 yards now total offense Terry Colley came in a running back just a couple now Malik Jackson another big play specialist he came as a safety at the University of Louisville, bulked up and became a very good linebacker. And it's the 24th time in 48 games for Bobby Petrino as head coach that they have been over 500 yards. And just to, uh, again, I go back to it, but it's so important because so many teams strive for it. Is the balance through the air and on the ground that Louisville is able to accomplish the yardage that they do each game. I had the chance to do the Army Navy game four or five times and it is one of the great spectacles in all of sport. A little screen dumped off to Barnage the tight end. Look at him run into the end zone. Touchdown Louisville. Yeah the first guy to give him a high five right there is Colby Smith. Barnage should give him a high five because Colby threw the block downfield to spring the big fella. Well, they're thinking about the Orange Bowl as the Oranges start to come down out of the field. They need records to lose tonight before that's going to happen, however. Right there, Kobe Smith threw the block on Delliston to spring. Barnage for six. Nice. Teammates helping teammates. Since they don't have enough big play wide receivers, they also have a big play tight end. 32 yards to Barnage. Bobby Petrino and his staff and the players and fans are trying to build down here and, and we should mention Tom George too, the athletic director has just done an incredible job with the facility of these and the hiring of coaches and building this program yeah. into something special Howard Schnellenberger yeah. when he came here in the mid 80s said we're on a collision course with the national championship the only variable is time a lot of people laughed at him back then it was a losing program with bad facilities very little interest in the area it was a pass complete to Corey Thompson, a sophomore with his third catch. Well, they're certainly on a collision course with a chance to be in the conversation with great regularity year in and year out with this talent, these facilities, and the improvements they continue to make. Louisville will finish its Big East schedule at 6-1 and one in conference, guaranteed to share the title with Rutgers. If Rutgers beats West Virginia and Morgantown tonight, Rutgers will go to the BCS Bowl game. Louisville likely to the Sun Bowl. Congratulations to Bobby Petrino, 11 and 1 in the regular season. He and the Cardinals and Randy Edsel and the Huskies conclude a disappointing campaign at 4 and 8, 1 and 6 in the Big East Conference. Will Michael Bush be back next year as they eye run at the national championship? They'd be one of the preseason favorites should he return. Final score, Louisville 48, Connecticut 17. 570 yards of offense today for the University of Louisville Cardinals. Now for Chris Spielman, Aaron Andrews, and our entire crew, Sean McDonough reminding you to stay tuned for basketball coming up next.
This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Louisville Big East champions. They've won 18 in a row on their home field here at Papa John. Now Dave O'Brien, Jay Billis, and Bill Raft.